Hello, I am Rob, Principal Database Engineer for the Babelfish Project at AWS. In this series of Babelfish videos, today we will take a look at another aspect of the Babelfish Compost tool, namely the different ways of processing and analyzing SQL and DDL input files. Compass is a standalone tool to help determine whether a SQL Server-based application can be migrated to Babelfish for Aurora Postgres. Compass performs a detailed analysis of all SQL features in your application and reports whether they are supported by Babelfish or not. Based on the Compass report, you can determine whether a migration of your application to Babelfish may be feasible. So running Compass should always be the first step when considering a migration to Babelfish. In an earlier video in this series with an introduction to the Compass tool, we looked at the basic way to run Compass. It is invoked from the command line and you have to specify your report name and an input file containing the SQL DDL code to be analyzed. Compass then generates a report and automatically opens it in your browser. If you have multiple DDL input files, for example, for multiple databases that are used by your application, you can process these together by simply specifying the file names on the command line. You can also use wildcard characters if that is more convenient. Another way to specify input files is to add them one by one to an existing report. For this, use the flag add. With this flag, Compass will analyze the input file and then generate a report for all files that were added. In case you need to overwrite an already added file, use the flag replace. Normally, you probably would not use this step-by-step -step approach, but you would just specify all input files in one go. But as we will see, this approach can be useful for more complex cases. When reading a file, the question is always how the file is encoded. Compass checks the so-called BOM bytes to detect the different Unicode formats. For example, when you generate a DDL file with SQL Server Management Studio, the file is encoded as UTF-16 by default. Compass stores all its internal files as UTF-8. So when it detects that the input file is UTF-16, it will convert it to UTF-8 first. Unfortunately, there is no standardized or guaranteed way to determine the encoding of just any file. If you process an input file with an unknown or incorrect encoding, you may get garbage and as a result a lot of syntax errors. In that case, you need to find out what the file's correct encoding is and specify the encoding explicitly with the flag encoding. Note that when you specify the encoding, all input files on that command line will be processed with the encoding that you specified. So if you have files with different encodings, you should use multiple steps using the add flag as shown here. If you have multiple applications, it may be convenient to analyze them together and to show each individual application in the resulting report. For this, you can use the flag report option apps. With this flag, each line in the report will show how many cases were found for each application. So far, we have assumed that the name of an application is the same as the name of its input file, like any company one or any company two. But this does not have to be the case. For example, an application can consist of multiple input files, but you want to use the same application name for all of them. You can specify the application name with the flag app name. This is also useful when input files have more abstract names that may not be immediately clear to everyone, as for example shown here. With different application names, you probably want to show these in the report, so use the flag report option apps. Sometimes an application is not represented by a single file, but by many files organized in a directory tree. You can process these with a the flag recursive. With this flag, if an input file is a directory, all files in the directory tree will be processed as input. Typically, you'd want to specify the application name to be used. If you don't, the name of the directory will be used as the application name. 
When using wildcards or when processing a directory tree, there could be files that are obviously not containing SQL code, such as PowerPoint files or images. By default, such file types are ignored by Compass. Should you want to process such files anyway, then use the flag include. If you want to exclude additional file types, use the flag exclude. To see which file types are excluded by default, use help exclude. Sometimes it may be most efficient to first import all files and then perform the analysis. You can suppress the initial analysis with the flag import only. Once you have imported all required files, you can then perform the analysis using the flag analyze. We've seen that flag before in an earlier video. When you specify multiple input files step by step, it may save time by avoiding doing the analysis twice, especially for large input files. Up until this point, we have mostly discussed how Compass can analyze DDL code, which typically is server-side SQL code that defines the schema. However, client applications also send SQL statements to the database server, and it may be necessary to analyze these too. To analyze client-side SQL statements, you first need to capture them. Compass can handle two types of captured query formats for SQL Server Profiler and for Extended Events. In both cases, the capture files have to be in XML format. To process such XML files, use the flag import format or import FMT with the argument as shown here. When you use this option, Compass extracts the captured SQL statements from the XML file and removes duplicate queries. We consider two queries duplicate if they differ only in some constant value, for example, a product ID number. This is relevant because captured queries often contain many very similar queries which are only different in their primary key value. If you don't want to deduplicate, specify the flag no dedup. After deduplication, the queries are written to a file in the directory extracted SQL and then that file is analyzed by Compass. Note that you cannot combine processing of captured query files with regular DDL files, so either you have to use separate reports or you have to use the step-by-step -step approach using the add flag. And now for the last topic in this video. Sometimes you may see Compass report an error. Almost always that means that there is something invalid in the input and Compass cannot parse it, so it reports a syntax error. I sometimes get questions from Compass users who think that these errors mean that Compass itself is broken and they ask me to fix it. But you can easily see where these errors come from, since any syntax errors are written to a file in the directory error batches for your inspection. Such errors are usually caused by something like using an incorrect encoding for the input file or there may be something invalid like a syntax error in the input file. When there is an error, Compass will print it on your screen and also log it in a file in the directory error batches. That file contains the actual batch that was processed plus the error message by the Compass parser. So usually you will see pretty quickly what the problem is. Here it seems the SQL code contains placeholders that probably have to be replaced by some sort of preprocessor. But apparently that preprocessing hasn't happened for our input files, so what we have here is invalid transact SQL syntax and therefore we get a syntax error. So, as we've seen, Compass supports multiple ways of processing and analyzing SQL and DDL files. Please download the Compass tool, as shown here, and try it for yourself. For now, thank you for watching.